And once it's there, it sticks around for hundreds of years. We're just adding to an ever thicker plastic soup. That's it, that's it. Kilos of plastic are being found in the stomachs of whales. Seabirds are starving as their bellies fill up with it. Large bits of plastic are gradually breaking down into tiny microplastics which enter marine creatures and pass on up the food chain. These truckfuls will not be adding to the problem. But what I want to know is how do we solve it? I think we've become so reliant on it because it's handy and cheap to produce that it's absolutely everywhere. It's obviously a really useful material and it's what we do with it that becomes problematic. As Hugh and I start on this mammoth project, it makes sense to begin by looking at the plastic in my own home. Da, da, da! The cupboard under the sink. Plastic, scouring pads, all my cleaning products, food bags. I don't know what that is. Why did I agree to do this? OK, so I have a lot of plastic. The question is, what's good and what's bad? We know carrier bags are bad, but Method Man and Mary J Blige, I mean, that's some of the best plastic in the world right there. Plastic is light, strong and incredibly durable. Mwah. For things we use over and over again, it's a wonder material. I've seen enough. But we often use it just once, to hold food, or for things like toiletries. These are so handy, but they're so bad. We're using a material that lasts for centuries for just a few days or weeks. And then we throw it away. This is the problem right here. But how big a problem is this? How much of this single-use plastic do we have in our homes right now across the whole country?